I guess two questions. One is, do you ever feel that anxiety that people in the stands feel when the clock is ticking? Um, and how, how long did it take for you to kind of arrive that that's the way you want to handle the end of first half situations? I'm um, just going through it all. I'm trying it in 19 and seeing our success with the matchup with the 20 years of stats we got before that. And on Saturday, did it did you handle it the way you wanted to, or did a little bit too much time go off the clock? No, we handled it the way we wanted to. We just, I mean, we ended up kicking out a fourth down, didn't we? That's right, right? Yeah, you had a spike and then a throwaway before that. Right. Um, I mean, it has to, you, when you're thinking about that, it's not times, it's downs. And so the plays would have been the same. On the second down before that, we tried to get an explosive, um, and then you check it down, and then it goes to third and two. And then now, if we would have not saved any time, it would have been third and two in the same situation with about, I, don't, I can't remember exactly, but I want to guess 40 seconds. And now everything's down to that third and two. And now if you don't get that third and two, now the other team has the ball back with 40 seconds and three timeouts. And now it's a totally different game. At that time, we're up seven to six. Worst case scenario, I feel like we're going into halftime up seven to six. I'd like it to be second worst case scenario, 10 to six, and then we'll make the field goal. We're starting with the ball in the third quarter so we can have a chance to lap them. Um, I still believe if we get the right look, uh, which we almost did, the mic was just a little bit too deep. Now we're inside the 10 and we have two shots at the end zone where you have a chance to go up 17, or sorry, 14 to six, get the ball first in the third quarter and now you're up 21 to six and the game has completely been changed for that reason. Um, now we didn't get the, they didn't give us the big shot. So now we came to a third and two. Well, at least that whole half wasn't on the line on the third and two. We knew exactly what we had. We still went for it but we didn't get it, and now we can kick our field goal, and they're never gonna touch the ball again. So those are the stats. It took me a while to believe it, just like all you guys, obviously. Um, but there's too much history with it. There's too much time, and I believe that really helps us have a good record. Brock Purdy said he was a little overly aggressive against the Packers, that there were check downs he could have hit that he would have liked to hit. Is that something you've been talking to him about, just hitting the check down? Something I talk to every quarterback out every single day I've ever coached. Um, so it's, it's crazy how many questions we're getting about every one of Brock's decisions, but I'm starting to realize it because I get a preview before all this. And uh, yeah, sometimes when um, quarterbacks make bad decisions, forcing it deep, they should check it down. Um, sometimes when they check it down and a guy hits the guy right away, they're like, damn, I, I had that over the top. Um, Brock's as good as any quarterback I've had at making those decisions. It does not mean he's perfect. Try to find me that guy. Is there a moment in, in a game this year or practice where you see Trent Williams moving in space and sort of marvel at how a guy that size has feet and moves like he does? Um, almost every day, except for walkthrough. Um, he refuses to bend his knees and walk through. It's more to mess with me. Um, you should have seen his workout last week. I mean, after having a week off and him just being in there deadlift and doing box jumps and stuff, and you would have thought he was a 24-year-old specimen. He said he's a 35-year-old specimen, so I'm sure he'll be a 40-year-old specimen too, so trust the man. Now, you guys have now been through this for the last several years. Um, I mean, it feels like the playoffs. It's, I mean, the playoffs always feel different. Just everyone is so alert, everyone's so on it. Um, everyone's so patient outside of here in terms of, I mean, at least for me, sleep at the office if you need to. Don't worry, you make sure you get it right. And I'm sure the players are the same. Everyone just knows it's, it's it if you don't win. So um, I'd like to say you focus as hard as you can every week, but when you get to these situations, just it's a little bit different. And, um, it makes it makes it a lot more fun. Kyle, when last year, guys said that one of the hardest parts of swallowing that loss was how hard it is to climb the mountain again. You can't just snap your fingers. How hard is it, Kyle, to, to get back to this point here in the Um, I mean, it's it's very hard. Uh, it's when you go into January every year to February, but I don't even know what the date is. I think it's getting close to February. Um, it's it's just long, and you know, but it's you always feel after. Um, whether you lose an NC championship, whether you lose a Super Bowl, I'm mean, ask anybody, whether it's one of them, whether it's two of them. I mean, after that, it's like, oh my God, that took so much and was so long to get there. How can you ever do that again? And that's why you go through your own little depression for a day, a week, a couple months, whatever it is. Um, usually by the time March hits though, and you're starting to look at free agency, you're starting to look at the draft, you're starting to look at your board of what your team is now, how you can improve it um, to the next season. 
you always get right back there if you like what you do. Um, but you, you definitely need a break after it. Everybody does because it's hard to do it at that high of a level just mentally and physically for the guys um, for this long of time. What would you say about your team that you have a group of guys that have been able to do it so many times in this last year? Uh, I think it, I mean, that's what I like about our guys the most. Football is very important. I mean, when we were a lot younger in 19 when we did it, and you know, we were, we went, you know, we were second pick in the draft with four and 12 team to all of a sudden, um, 13 and three and going there. So it was more, I mean, you didn't really know. You just, you didn't know what type of year it was going to be. And you kind of just fell into it. And then you come back and you, you think about all that stuff the next year and the next year during that COVID year and all those guys we lost up in New York and losing our quarterback and Nick and a number of people. It just, it ended so fast. And then the COVID stuff was so weird. And, but then you get to the next off season and guys just, now they know how, how bad a season sucks when you don't do good and how much more fun it is when you are in that and you're playing for games in the playoffs. And that's what I think we learned in both of those two years. And, and um, you know, we snuck in, not snuck in, but we earned to get in at that last game um, in 2021 and then made a run to get to the championship. And last year we went on a big win streak to get, I forget what seed we were, but um, guys start to get used to how how hard it is to get there, how important it is to get there. And that's why I think our veterans have been different a little bit in the off season. Um, not necessarily just, we're gonna work harder or do this or that, but it's just a little bit more deliberate in everything you do. You know, it's it's not about just being ready for camp, training camp. It's not about just winning a job. It's it's about how to do this as a team. Um, we've got a lot of good individuals, but I feel like we've thought as a team um, a lot since 19. Kyle, the, uh, the, the, against Green Bay on the 39 yard um, touchdown run by McCaffrey, it looked like Warner might have been on the wrong side of the formation, and the, the mics picked up uh, Brock saying, "Stay there, stay there." What was going on on that play? Was he on the wrong side of the formation? Was that a heads-up play by by Purdy? No, we, there was a we changed there's we changed plays, we balanced it out on which way we were going to run, um, and then he was supposed to flip in motion, and we were just too late in the count, so Brock instead of having him flip in motion, he just um, took the motion off and left him there oh. because we were going to play clock. More with it was an awesome job. We would have to delay a game, or if he would have just sent that, we would have had a snap and had no one block. So it was kind of a good awareness of what everyone's doing on a run play. With, with Brock missing those check downs early, but then self correcting in the fourth quarter on the final drive, does that encourage you that you left that behind and in going into this game? You no, know, it's different. I mean, the third and 10 on the last drive, I'd say it should have probably been a check down on that unbelievable throw he threw way over. I forget who it was, and Jawan came out of nowhere and caught it. I thought that was a check down until Juan caught it. Um, so it's it's playing the game. Like, yeah, you judge everything, but you got to try to play the game and you got to try to win. And if it's just automatic all the time, they're deep, check down, they're tight, throw a D. Like, yeah, that's how it should work out. But you're in a pocket and you're playing a sport. You're not reviewing it like a coach with a film after, and you're not just asking questions based off of stuff. It's he's got to play, and that's why. Yeah, the last drive he did some good on that, but it was. Wasn't just as consistent as the question. Kyle, we'll take two more. Kyle, what did you think, Steve? Both Christian and Brock named MVP finalists. Um, it's what they deserved. The way they played all year. The way they played last year. Um, I mean, both of them at their positions as good as anybody at quarterback and running back I've been around. Also watched football for a long time. And, um, there's a lot of good players in this league, so that sucks that one person's got to get all those awards. But those guys are right there with those other guys. Brent, what's that? We don't call him the twelfth man here. <laughs> <laughs> but, but our crowd is very important. Our crowd is our crowd. I think is the best in football. They travel extremely well. They don't have to travel this week. I get Alliance fans travel pretty well. Um, I mean, we love having home field advantage. Our defense more than anything. Our players coming out of the tunnel. Um, we want to win it here. It's. It's a huge deal. It affects everybody, and I think always in sports. I mean, everyone likes playing at home, but in football, uh, when it's loud, that truly is an advantage. I mean, that truly messes up what one side of the ball can do um, on the other team, and that's why it's very important that we're loud. Kyle, Brian's the last one. The uh, defensive line obviously did affect love at times, particularly late, but given the investment, the millions and millions, can you see like zero sacks in a playoff game? Or that's not acceptable. Um, no, okay. I don't go in there and say 
look at these millions. I go in there and I look at how we won and how it came. No, if, if you got a four-man rush and people are chipping every time and the back staying in to help, you know, which means you have eight guys in protection, there's one quarterback, there's two guys out on the route and seven guys in coverage, um, probably not going to give any sacks. But I don't think I'd give any points either. So then there's a balance out to it. Yeah, we want more sacks, definitely. But how are guys going to play us? How are we going to do it? And um, I liked how our D-line played. All right, guys. All right, guys. All right, thanks.